Hey guys, what is up? Uh, it is Flood here. Um, we are going to do a utility guide today. Uh, this has been quite requested. A lot of people see this, but this isn't exactly going to be what you thought it was. Uh, we are going to discuss more on when to use utility than how to use utility because all the util follows pretty much the same guidelines in terms of the throwing mechanic. But uh, identifying when to use utility and the right moments to use them is way more important in my opinion because you're going to figure it out. I promise you if you know when to use util, uh, actually throwing it will become second nature. Um, but identifying the right time to do so is, is the most important part. The most important thing when we think about util is, is like when do we use util, you know? We have so many different types of utility and we want to make sure that we're using it in the right time. And this is my opinion, right? So this, some pros may disagree and that's completely fine. This is just how I see uh, from an objective standpoint how to use utils. So we'll start with blue zones. I would put blue zones in an A tier. So maybe A, B tier utility. The only time blue zones become an S tier utility and is fantastic in lots of situations is if you have two of them. And the reason for that is if you didn't know, you can just heal through a blue zone. If you have three to four first aids, you're in a shack and you have no chance of living, just heal through it. I promise you, you can heal straight through it as long as you time your first aids somewhat correctly, which is basically the second you hit 75% HP, just instantly start the first aid. But when to use blue zones? Blue zones should only be used as zoning off sections in buildings you're trying to clear a shack but you kind of do need two blue zones to do this and it's really a zoning tool you should use blue zones as a way to zone players into areas you want them to be at or to push them out of areas you don't want them to be at or at least not be there for free you know they, they can go in there if they really have a blue zone backpack or they really want to but we want to make sure that when we're using blue zones we're using them for control uh, we want to make sure people are doing what we want them to do. Uh, we want to be in the driver's seat. So that's blue zones. All right, we'll go into Molotovs now. Uh, Molotovs are very similar to blue zones. I honestly think they're just, they're the same type of util, but they're just a different way of um, expressing it. Uh, it's the same thing. It's building control. You're clearing shacks. Um, the only main difference that Molotovs have over blue zones is that they're a fantastic stalling device. Have you guys ever been in a building and there's three people below you, the team's ages away? Look, if you need a stall, throw a Molotov on the staircase, throw a Molotov in your doorway, just make sure that no one can walk through them because no one is ever going to run through a Molotov. And if they do, just kill them, guys. Like, if you lose to someone running through a Molotov, that's your fault, honestly. But Molotovs are not the best piece of util purely because they're not as versatile as the rest of them. I do think it kind of sits on the same tier as blue zones, maybe a little bit lower because having two doesn't really change that much. But I do, I do think that blue zones and molotovs of the damage utilities aren't the best. I would almost always opt for grenades because they are a lot more efficient and they do have a lot more uses. So grenades. Grenades, in my opinion, are one of the most versatile pieces of damage utility you can possibly use. You can clear ridges, you can clear buildings, you can clear shacks, you can pre-nade. Like, there's so many different things you can do with your, your grenades. But I do think it's super important to understand when to use them. And I think the best times to use nades is when you have people locked in a position that they cannot leave. So, stuck behind a tree or a rock, you know, and you have a clear nade. You always, always want to use nades with teammates if you can. Double nading things is one of the most effective ways to clear stuff 100%. If someone's sitting behind a rock, they might not, they might take 99 damage, you know, and they're not dead. But if you have two grenades, uh, it's always going to clear a position you want, and then you can pause. So this is really good for clearing spots you might think someone's ratting at, or someone is holding a ridge. You can talk to your team and be like, hey, let's pin our grenades, and clear this ridge together with the double nade, you know? So that's a really, really helpful tool you can use. I would encourage you guys to use grenades with your teammates and just learn how to use them as team with as a team, sorry. But grenades, you can throw them in the building. If you're breaching a building, whack that bitch in, you know? Throw the grenades into the rooms you think players will be at. But one of the most underrated uses for grenades is pre-nading. If you guys see a convoy of cars driving at you, aggressively 
throw a nade, underarm a nade on your window or on your wall or at your front door. I promise you, this is such an undervalued skill. If you can master this, people are going to hate crashing because you've already naded their main entry spot and they're going to be in shambles instantly. The second they pull up and get out of their cars, they're either just going to blob up or they're really going to struggle to get audio information. Because remember, cutting off audio information is just as, as valuable as visual information. For smokes, we can use smokes defensively, offensively, and as a distraction. Smokes are such an important tool in this game. You need to get used to throwing smokes as often as you can, honestly. There's so many situations where people will die with smokes, myself included, and if you use two or three smokes, your whole team can be alive sometimes. But in terms of defensively, when should we use smokes defensively? Well, when we need to cover off an angle that someone is shooting us from, we can smoke it. Simply throw the smoke a little bit away from you and use the smoke as a piece of soft cover um, to defend yourself, right? This is the same for pretty much any situation where you're getting res, like throw a smoke on the res sometimes throw a smoke in a line to defend LOS, you know? There's so many defensive ways you can use smokes. But one of the interesting ones that I think you guys will love is offensively using smokes. And you think like, what? Smokes don't do any damage. Of course they don't. But what I mean by this is that sometimes smoking yourself is actually the worst thing you can do. And the alter alternative is to smoke your enemies. So think about being on a ridge and there's a compound in front of you and they have two windows to peek you from, right? Throw the smoke at them, right? And you have a full run in the open for free because you have smoked them. This is really, really effective for smoke guns. So that's why I always carry a smoke gun because it's so easy to use smoke a smoke gun offensively. You just shoot at their doorway and they're fucked basically. And then finally, using smokes as a distraction. If you are resing, Throw a smoke a little bit away, you know, like throw it 5, 10, 20 meters away from you and just stick the res. You know, people are going to use their util to nade the smoke or blue zone the smoke or molly the smoke. The amount of times I've witnessed in games, one smoke can seriously cause an enemy team to throw four or five pieces of damage util. Think about that as a trade, like we're absolutely happy with that. If people waste all their damage util on a smoke, that is just a distraction. That's awesome. All right, stuns. Stuns are super versatile as well. I definitely think they're one of the most underutilized utils purely because honestly, most of the time people just want to shoot instead of throw stuns, which is completely fair. I am awful at throwing stuns and I know that's something I need to improve on, but you can use stuns defensively. You know, throw stuns if a team's pushing you, it should give you enough time for them to slow down and hopefully you can reset and get some comms out. You can use it offensively, of course. If you're about to push a team, throw a stun before you do it. You're about to enter a building throw a stun in before you do it you know it's just that extra little bit of support and honestly there's pretty much never a reason why you shouldn't be using a stun if you have one uh, if you have any risk of dying you should probably use your utility to mitigate that risk as much as you can uh, something that is not done very often but is super super undervalued is pre-stunning crashes underhand a nade i mean a stun sorry out of your window and outside your wall when people hit your wall, if they are blind and deaf, you have two advantages over them instantly. You can hear them and you can see them. So if you can learn to pre-stun or pre-nade crashes, you're going to have a much better time at defending your own compounds and making sure that people can't just get into your buildings for free. Stuns are like a pacing, pacing tool, in my opinion. Uh, using stuns... Uh, is basically the way to dictate how fast or slow a team fight is going to be, uh, whether you use it defensively or offensively. So I would highly recommend binding stuns, grenades, and smokes. And if you really want to, you can also bind blue zones and molotovs, but you must, you have to have smokes, nades, and stuns bound. Like you really do, like they're just so important and they're so versatile. So please... Make keybinds, please, I beg you. All right, so we're gonna quickly go over the mistakes for each util, um, just so you guys don't make them. Uh, blue zones, don't use one on a shack. Like, if a player is intelligent, they're just gonna heal through it and you've just wasted a blue zone for nothing. If you're crashing a compound, and if you're getting crashed, 
don't throw a blue zone, dude. Like, throw a nade or a stun instead. Like, you're not going to be able to see through the blue zone very well. It's going to create a lot of chaos for your team, potentially, and maybe theirs. But it's there's just nade or stun. It's a better option. And please don't YOLO throw your blue, blue zones, you know? Like, if you have no idea what you're aiming at, please don't throw it. Like, it's just such a waste. Like, if you ever get into a close quarters battle and you want to zone someone off from an entire building... You'd, you'd be kicking yourself if you realized you just threw a random one 10 minutes a, ago, you know? For Molotovs, same thing applies. Like, if you see a car driving at your compound, don't pre-Molotov. Like, you're going to do it pre-nade and start shooting them straight away. Like, it just doesn't seem like an effective use of util only because there's better options available. You do have only a Molotov, sure. Molotov the crash. But I do think... That you should pretty much always be nading and stunning a crash if you can. And then, same thing. Blue zones and mollies. Very similar types of util. Don't throw them randomly. Have a target in mind. Please don't just just uh, throw it randomly and pray that you hit something. It's never going to work because its spread is so small that you have to seriously throw like a banger molly for it to work. Four mistakes with grenades. Immediately nading. Guys, if you tag an opponent at a tree, please do not pull your nade out and start running at it. I guarantee you, if you verse a good player, they're going to quickly check to see if you're nading. And if you have a nade in your hand and you get knocked, you are blowing yourself up. I promise you, there's dozens of you in, who have watched this video, who have died like this, run around a corner to nade something, and the person is just holding the angle, and you die, and the nade lands on you, and you're molding, you know? So just wait a second, you know, get that headshot, get that tag, check for the re-peak, and if they re-peak, shoot them, and, if, and then after that, maybe you can nade, you know, don't do it straight away, and make sure you're not exposing yourself too much when you do nade. Talking about nades, hooking your grenades, guys, learn the timings, go into a training mode, learn the timings of grenades, like, it's super simple once you understand the formula, and the formula is really simple. If you're throwing your grenade far, don't cook it, because it will go further. If you're throwing a grenade close, cook it, because it will blow up sooner. Pretty simple. Mostly comes down to in-game experience, but knowing when to use nades, and knowing to never cook it if you're trying to throw it really far, is super important. And then not pairing your grenades. Guys, if you want to clear something 100%, use two nades. If you see a rock that you thought someone was at, get your teammate and nade it together. You know, like then it's 100% clear. The amount of times that this has happened to me on my teams where we will nade something, call it is free, and it is not free because someone lives on 10, 20, 30 HP, you know, and that, and that ruins the game. So that's a mistake that some people make. And for smokes, smoking your angles off. Never smoke yourself off, you know? If you throw a smoke on you when you're playing a position and you need to defend the position, you have removed all of your angles to defend, right? Smoke the angles that are threats, but don't smoke yourself directly. You should almost never be throwing a smoke on yourself. If you throw a smoke on yourself, you better be resing a teammate, or you better be in a car fort in the middle of a field shitting your pants. Like, you should always be throwing smokes a little bit away from you, just so you have room to wiggle and room to look for other angles. Flashes. Honestly, the biggest problem with flashes that people make is just not throwing them. Like, you can go, if you want to find something that is hilarious, go look at Twire, go look at some professional games, and look at the players who pick up a billion flashes and throw, like, two, you know? If you have a flash, get used to using them, you know? Like, I'm working on that. Like, personally, because like, you guys can go look at Twire, I'm shit at this too. Get used to using flashes. Like, flashes are so important, and they can save you in so many circumstances. So, learn how to use them, and just remember to use them. It's like... If you suck at throwing them, that's fine, but just throw them, you know? Like, it can't hurt most of the time. But another big thing that people do with flashes when they do actually throw them is people throw flashes so far. Like, it's not going to flash you if, you if it lands 20 meters behind me, you know? Throw it close. Let it bounce. Like, use that bounce. Like, once it bounces, it's going to go off very quickly. That's how the flash works. Bounce at it. Throw it onto a ridge. It's going to bounce up and flash everyone. So don't throw flashes far. They're not the same as nades or or blue zones where you just want to get them as far as away from um as far 
as you can. Just use them close, like they're only really close quarters util. Like you really should only be using stuns when you're about to go into a close, close engagement where you want that upper hand of audio and potential uh, visual impairment for your opponent. So these are the, the mistakes and these, I hope, this isn't really a traditional video guys, like I would love to include more examples, but I just, there's just too many examples to include. So I'd rather just get the theory out and you guys can figure it out yourself and uh, because that's how you learn, honestly, um, playing the game and doing this is how you're gonna learn. So just a quick, a quick recap, uh, the path to improve is really simple for utility. Um, it just takes time. Just be patient. But I'll read it out for you just so you can listen. You need to set keybinds for the STA utility. This is a must. You have to have your keybinds for all the good utils. It's even better if you can set keybinds for every util, but make sure you have the core three. Practice throwing just a tiny bit in the training range. You know, get a feel for how far you can throw a grenade, how perfectly you can cook a grenade. It takes two minutes, really. Two minutes of throwing grenades in training mode, and that will give you, off the bat, a better chance in real games. Understanding when to use utility, which is what I'm trying to teach you guys in this episode, is the first major step into improving. Because from there, you can apply the when to real games, and then you're going to die in real games. And that gives you something to review, you know, review why you died. Did you use utility correctly? Could you have used utility correctly, right? Once you've identified why you died, create a, an easy plan, and that might be for grenades. Like, I, I throw my grenades too far. Well, every time I throw a grenade for the next day, throw it, like, cook it a little longer than I normally would. Just go in your brain, like, I'm going to throw it. Wait, I need to wait an extra second. Then throw it, you know? There's plenty of things you can do, and they're very self-explanatory. I promise you, everyone who's watching this video, promise you, you are a smart enough human to figure out what's going wrong. And I promise you, if you really want to, you can practice what you've identified and hopefully you get results. Like if you don't, then you've probably identified the wrong thing. But I want to thank you guys for watching this episode. It's mostly theory, so probably boring for a lot of you, but that's okay. Um, if you want to improve, you want to improve. If you do want to support me, guys, please, please support me by watching PGS Three and four, I will be in Shanghai representing Team Falcons. We are the first seed for Americas. Uh, I'll be there for about a month and a bit, so there won't be any videos for a while. Sorry about that, but when I get back, we'll continue making uh, videos. So leave your suggestions in the comments. I'll always respond if it's a good question. Even if it's not, I probably will still respond. But uh, thank you so much for your support, guys, and I hope you enjoyed this theory class. This isn't really many examples, but uh, we can create another video if we really need to.